Cavalcade Theater, brought to you by DuPont, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Nearly everything in our daily lives is improved by chemistry. From transportation to the clothes we wear, chemistry helps bring us better food, makes our homes more beautiful, more comfortable, helps protect our health, and adds to the enjoyment of our leisure time. Now, tonight's story on the DuPont Cavalcade Theater. guest list. But, Laurie, honey, you just can't send out that many invitations. Why, you couldn't get that many people in here if you hung them from the rafters. If I could have had a church wedding, there would have been plenty of room. We'd still have to come back for the lunch. Mama, please call it the reception. Well, that's what it is, so, it, so it's better to call it that. Besides, uh, we could have had the reception at the American Legion Hall. Janie did, and she, she had 300 guests. Janie Schmidt's father owns a hardware store. Your father drives the bus. That makes a lot of difference. It certainly does. Oh, brides. You know, when your daddy and I were married, there was nobody there but him and me and the preacher. He had to go out on the street and drag in a couple of strangers for witnesses. Well, Bert and I are not you and daddy. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, Mama. Oh, you know what I mean. That was the base your father won at the carnival. He spent a dollar and a quarter throwing baseball. Mama? Oh, don't get mad. You know what I mean. I'm sorry. I know how much you like this. What did Daddy give you for a wedding present? Well, we didn't have very much money. And we just bought the things we needed. What did he give you? A washboard. There. That's what I mean. Well, what did you expect me to do? Start washing our clothes by rubbing them on my bare knuckles? Mom, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. Just that, Mom, I'm, I'm afraid I, I don't want to cook and scrub and take care of babies until I'm old and ugly. Honey, I, I don't want to tell you that those things don't happen. Women do get older, and some of them get ugly, but it happens slowly. And if you've got a good marriage, you won't mind at all. Sadie! Sadie, I'm home! Well, I can hear you are. <laughs> I brought Bert with me. Do you suppose a little water in the stew there'll be enough for everybody? There's plenty for everyone. Hello, Bert. Glad you came. I am, thanks. I saw Bert coming out of the hardware store, and I figured there's no use in eating that bean ring. Those days will soon be over, huh, kid? Yeah. You sure I'm not butting in, Miss Connor? Heck no. And what's with this Mrs. Connor? Why don't you call me Mom? He will not. I want Bert to call you Mother Connor, and I'll like call your mother, Mother Higgins. Ha! And what's he going to call me, Father Connor? I'd like to see either one of us keep a straight face if he does. <laughs> he can call you Alfred. But, Laurie, I've been calling your dad Al for two years. Go on, make us look cheap and common. Well, there you are, lad. She's going to be your problem from now on, so you might just as well get used to it. How about a beer? Oh, go get it yourself. I've got this. Now, you stop that. <laughs> oh, well, why didn't you tell me? I still had ten no, curls in my hair. Away. You look cute. Oh. And after all, when we're married, I'll see you in pin curlers and face cream. And you'll see me unshaven. And 
Parking that Brex in my undershirt. You wouldn't. That's not We're not I... going to be posing for magazine stories. We're just going to be living our life together. And after all, we are human. It's just an excuse. I'm human. Would you like some more stew, Bert? It's wonderful, but I just couldn't manage any more. You sure are a good cook. Well, thanks, Bert. Uh, but Lori makes better stew than I do. Just you wait. She's going to be the best cook in this town. But your wedding lunch is mine, and I've got it all planned. I'm going to roast six chickens and make a nice big meatloaf. And meatloaf? Oh, Mother, you couldn't possibly. Well, why not? You know very well that meatloaf is the one dish your Grandma Connor likes. Well, couldn't we sort of keep Grandma out of the way? Is that any way to talk about my mother and your own grandmother? We know how she is. She, she won't keep her hearing aid turned up and she'll, she'll scream at everybody. And I don't want to be embarrassed at my own wedding. It's not just yours and Bert's. It's our wedding, too. You're our only child, and this is something we've aimed at for a long time. You know, seeing you get started off and being a woman is a big job. It's something we've all worked and hoped for. Yes, I'm pretty awful. I'll wash the dishes. Oh. Um, I'll see who gets to dry. The one who gets the short straw helps Lori. <laughs> Don't they get to choose their own? Do you think I cheat? Yes. Well, just for that, you win. I'll help. No, you won't. You and I are going to go out on the porch and sit and talk. Lori's never let me have you to myself five minutes the whole two years you've been coming here. Go ahead and have secrets. See if I care. I'm sorry, Daddy. You know, honey, I got a surprise for you. That piano that you wanted to rent so the lady could sing with it at the wedding, I think we can afford it with the money we're going to save on the flowers. But we've already shopped around every florist in town, and we've got to have enough to make the house look nice. That's just what I'm trying to tell you. We can. You see, every once in a while, there's a little old lady that rides on my bus, and she's always got a great big bunch of roses all wrapped up in a newspaper. And she's kind of a shabby old lady with a stringy coat, and I knew that if she was selling, she couldn't get much for them, and if... If she was buying them, why, she couldn't have paid much for them. So I've been kind of keeping my eye on her. And today was my lucky day. She sat right back at the driver's seat. And so I asked her, I said, did she grow them herself? And she said, no. And she stuck them right in my face. And do you know what? They were paper. She made them herself. They were so real that you could have knocked me over with a feather. Daddy, did, did you agree to buy them? Well, no, but I asked her name and address, and I figured that maybe when you and your mother went to look at the apartment, she could... Uh... Oh, Daddy, do you, do you want me to have paper roses at my wedding? Look, we're not made of money, you know. Uh, what do you think of it, baby, huh? Bert, you're just a kid. You're both just kids. Oh... Darn it. I never know how to begin anything with Lori either. Well, what I mean is, kids can hurt each other. Well, they don't mean to, but just out of dumbness they do. Oh, you're a nice boy, Bert. And I'm glad. You'll be good to her. Sure I will. I don't know what I was so worried about. Well, I guess I'll go in and put the coffee pot back on again. Mrs. Connor. Mom, I love Laurie, and I'll take good care of her. I know you will, son. Bert, I want to see you. Yes, honey? What's the matter, honey? Everything, that's all. Just everything. I wanted my wedding to be wonderful. Dreamed about it for so long. I'm only going to be married once, so I... I wanted a wedding like... Like those girls in the Sunday papers. Guess that's too much to ask. Well, Laura, you're going to have a very nice wedding. Oh, yes, I can't have a long dress because I have to have an informal house wedding. I have to have Grandma come and she'll, 
blurt out something right in the middle of a ceremony. I have to go live in three dingy rooms over the cut-rate drugstore. And only furniture is a stove and a bed. And a washing machine. I was getting it as a surprise for you. Is that my wedding present? That's progress for you. I got a washboard. Huh. You know what Hal Fisher gave Janie for a wedding present? Harold Fisher's father still gives him an allowance. I don't have a rich father. I've got to work for a living. Janie's father gave him an, an all-expenses-paid vacation. Janie's father owns the hardware store where I work. And my father's a bus driver. Is that what you mean? I don't mean anything. I didn't even start this. Oh, why didn't you marry Janie? You, you could have, you know. She was always making eyes at you. I didn't marry Janie because I don't love Janie. I love you. And anyway, Janie Smith was just practicing on me. She loved Harold Fisher. Yes, I... She was married in a long gown in a church with the, the organ playing. And you're going to be married in your own home with all your friends and relatives gathered around you to a man who loves you. Unless you want to wait. Wait? Yes. Remember I told you at the beginning it might be a good idea to wait till Bert finished his hitch in the army? Laurie, do you want to do that? Do you want to wait till I come back? Do you? No. But we're talking about what you want. All these things we can't afford. The, the fancy wedding your folks can't give you. The, the house full of furniture I can't buy. We've talked this all over. You know exactly how much money there is to spend. We've just got to make do. Is that what marriage is, make do? What do you think it is, a, a bed of roses? Yes. Because that's what I want it to be, a beautiful and romantic bed of roses. Well, I can't give you that. Bert! Bert! Good night. I do want a bed of roses. We will return to Cavalcade Theatre right after tonight's story of DuPont Chemistry. Shocking as it may seem, in this country today there are more than 20 million homes on the borderline of decay because of neglect over the years. What is America doing to meet this challenge? To stem the tide that turns homes to eyesores, lowers living standards, devaluates property? Well, here in Cleveland, Ohio, a few months ago, civic groups launched a unique program called Operation Demonstrate. An information center was set up on the mall downtown to give homeowners free, unbiased advice on how to modernize their homes effectively and economically. And here, inside the center, is Mr. Loring Gelba, chairman of Operation Demonstrate. Many of us stand to overlook the fact that few areas in America begin as bad areas. The decline is usually gradual, but infectious. One uncared for home can start an entire neighborhood downhill. Eventually, responsible families move away, and their former homes join the ranks of slum breeders. We here in Cleveland have attempted to check this trend with Operation Demonstrate. The objective of Operation Demonstrate was to show city homeowners how they could live better where they are. As a dramatic example of what can be done, Two old homes like this were moved to the mall and completely done over, inside and out. Wiring, heating, plumbing, paints, and other improvements transformed the houses. On 89th Street in the city of Cleveland, 10 houses were selected to show what paint alone could do to revive sound but aging homes. The DuPont Company and three other paint manufacturers cooperated by having these houses painted with their products. Crews of painters soon transformed gray, dingy, weather-beaten houses into bright, colorful homes that blended with each other, the result of community color planning. Quality paint was used throughout every house. Paint Village is a remarkable demonstration of how paint alone can dress up a neighborhood, help keep up property values, and encourage families to live better where they are. In rundown homes, such as this one, of course, Paint is only part of the improvement needed. If you'd like to know more about what you can do to fix up your neighborhood, write Housing, the Advertising Council, 25 West 45th Street, New York. 
To help you live better where you are, DuPont Paint Chemistry provides quality paints for every purpose. Products of chemical research that are among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, back to Cavalcade Theater. Mom came in from the farm today. Did she buy her dress? Yes, she couldn't get a lavender one, so she bought brown. Brown? Might as well let my mother get pink like she wanted to. Mom got us her wedding gift. I'm not supposed to tell you, but she let me see. What is it? It's an electric coffee pot. You know farm folk don't have much money. But Uncle Lee brought his pickup truck in full of canned goods and potatoes. Even a couple of kitchen chairs they didn't need. I gave him the key to the apartment and he put them there. Your Uncle Lee and Aunt uh, Grace are coming tomorrow, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, and I asked Mr. Smith. Oh, Bert, you know, we can't possibly get any more people in this house. But honey, after he sold me that nice Davenport for just five dollars, I had to. Wait till you see it. No springs broken or anything. Maybe it's good there'll be a lot of people. May Maybe no one will notice what an awful wedding it's going to be. Is it going to be an awful wedding? I don't think so. Good night, Bert. Well, I, I've got to put up my hair and get my beauty sleep. Laurie, please say you're happy. Oh, it's just me. I guess I'm silly. You wanted that other kind of wedding pretty badly, didn't you? I wanted it to be beautiful, full of meaning. I wanted it to change me so I'd feel married. I don't need a lot of fuss to know I Lori. love you. Oh, Lori, honey, it's almost 11. You better go up to bed. And Bert, you better run along home so you don't oversleep tomorrow. <laughs> and be here at 9 o'clock sharp. No later. 9 o'clock. Good night, Bert. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Connor. Who is it? It's me, Winnie Allender. Why, Miss Allender, I was just waiting out here till I saw Bert leave. You mean you've been standing out here in the dark? Well, come on in. <laughs> the house is a mess. We had to move out half the furniture to make room for the folding chairs. You know, Laurie's getting married in the morning. Yes, I know. It's about the wedding I came. Oh, it's going to be nice. Oh, I do hope you'll be able to be here. Well, what I wanted to ask is, I never took part at a wedding before, and I'm not getting any younger, and well, well, I mean, maybe if I could stand up with Lori. Well, sure, but it's just the family. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have asked. Button in that way. Oh, now, now, Miss Allender, you've been a real good neighbor and a real good friend. I'm sure Laurie would be proud and happy to have you stand up with her. Oh, thank you. I'll be here early in the morning. Laurie? Laurie? I got a surprise for you. Oh, well, lady. Where do you want these? Oh, uh, put them right over there. Yes, ma'am. I'll take these. All right, ma'am. Oh, Laurie, go back upstairs. The guests will be arriving any minute. I put Grandma in your room these to help. flowers? Oh, yes. Well, I'll just fix these, Mama. I'm sorry about not wanting Grandma to come. Oh, that's all right, honey. I understand. Al! Al! What? Oh, uh, did you see about that car that you were going to borrow? Now, look, Sadie, the transportation is my department, and I'll take care of it. All right, all right. All right. Hello? Hello? Hello there. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Mrs. Ross. Uh, Mrs. Ross? Yes. Your husband has talked to me on the bus. Oh, the flower lady. Yes. Won't you come in? Thank you. My, how lovely. You know, he's the best of the drivers. He always waits for me when he sees me running for my stuff. Let's me out right in front of my house so I won't get my flowers wet, you know. So I started something for his little girl in appreciation. And I made this. 
Did you ever see anything prettier? Oh, they're very nice. And everything in this is symbolic of the future happiness of the bride. They're the orange blossoms, roses, of course, and in the center, I, I put this orchid. All the society brides seem to have them, you know. I, I don't know that I made it just right or not. I, I, I never had a real one, you know. Oh, Laurie, dear, please hurry up. Oh, the bride! And you have your bouquet. Well, of course you would. And an orchid. Oh, well, you won't be wanting this. I think I put too many petals on my orchid anyway. You're a lovely girl. You deserve real flowers, not paper. These look pretty good, but still they're just paper. Well, wouldn't you like to stay for the wedding? Thank you, dear. But you probably have just enough chairs to go round. I know how it is. Uh, well, won't you let me just stand here at the foot of the steps, where I won't be in anybody's way? Of course. Uh, we'll be happy to have you. Thank you. Excuse me, I've got to run. Yes, dear. After all, they're, they're just paper. It's just an ordinary dress. Oh, you look lovely in it. Pretty enough to be on a magazine cover. Like uh, one of those model girls. Do you mean it, Graham? Do you really think so? Maybe I should have gone to New York. I could have gotten a job. I could have been somebody, somebody important. But you are somebody important. You're Laurie Connor, a beautiful young girl. And you're about to become Laura Higgins. And you'll be a beautiful bride. The world is full of brides. There's dozens of them every day. It's ordinary. Well, they're ordinary people. I want to be ordinary. I thought marriage would change everything. I always thought there was a kind of magic in it. There is. Your whole world will change if you let it. Sometimes two perfectly ordinary people do an extraordinary thing. They fall in love and all at once they're in the garden. Love is like a garden, you know. And like a garden it has to be tended. For you get from it only what you plant and care for. <laughs> That's poetry, Grandma, not yes. sense. It's poetry, but you'll need more poetry than sense if you're going to get the most out of love. You didn't expect poetry out of an ugly old woman like me now, did you? Oh, Graham, you're not ugly. <laughs> oh, I can see in the mirror. But I don't really believe it. Your grandfather did that for me. I wasn't a pretty girl and I knew it. I went around hanging my head. But when your grandfather came along, he saw something in me. Lord bless him. And why he should want me, I'll never know, but he did. Oh, my goodness, I forgot the most important thing. His mother in Ireland had made this for her own wedding, and she sent it to me. When we were married, he put this on my head. All these years, I've had it put away, but I always try to walk as though I were still wearing it. He died, left me with five children to raise by myself. If I hadn't had this crown, I couldn't have done it. It's important. It's important, isn't it, Graham, what a, what a man gives his wife for a wedding present? Yes, uh, it should say something to her, something she needs to know. What did you know? I knew that I was loved. Did someone know they were loved from a washing machine? What's that? Oh, nothing. Did my mother wear this crown? Oh, good heavens, no. She didn't need it. She and your dad were so full of love, they loped off to get married like two colts in the meadow. No crown would have stayed on her head. They were in love. What do you mean, were? Love has grown between those two more every day. Do you know what he says to her when he comes home from work? He, he greets her by asking, how about a bottle of beer, kid? And she says, you know where it is, get it yourself. Is that the language of love? Yes. Yes, it is for them. They understand it. I wonder if Bert and I will understand each other that well. well. This crown meant so much to you, and did so much for you, but, well, because of Grandpa. I wonder if Bert will even know what it's for. Oh, Grandma, were you so unsure? Yes, until he put the crown on my head, and then I knew.
Lori, I just want... Bert, come back here. It's bad luck to see the bride before the wedding. Harm's done now, Sadie. Here. Is this for Lori? Graham and, and, and my great-grandmother both wore it when they were married. It's beautiful. It's a crown of love. I'll try not to muss your hair. You should always wear a crown, Lori. I knew he'd know what it was for. You made a good choice, Lori. Come on down, kids. Let's make this legal. How about that yelling to try to act like the father of the bride? Well, the sooner we get the wedding over, the sooner we eat. Oh. <laughs> Come on down. Now hurry, kids. Dearly beloved, we're gathered together here to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. Your coach, Princess. A girl only gets married once. At least you could have let him take her in a taxi. But why, Mama? The company loaned down the bus for the whole day. Oh, I'm <laughs> Coming up? Sure we are. Now you stop that. No, we're not. Go ahead, kids. I'm going to take my best girl for a ride in the country. Your mom and mine came and fixed it up. Look, honey, I know how you feel. I'm going to work hard, real hard. I can't help how the wedding was, but in a year or two, there'll be enough money to make it up to you. I, make I it up to me? Oh, you idiot. This is the most beautiful wedding anyone could ever have had. Now, where's the washing machine? Well... Look. A bed of roses. It's what you wanted, Doc. I got the money back on the washing machine. It was a crazy thing to do. The roses will only last a night, and the washing machine will... Oh, my mother started with a washboard. I guess I can make do. Anyway, it isn't true about the roses. They'll last forever. <laughs> <laughs> 